I know y'all just saw our last interview just at nine o'clock, which was super dope, super inspirational. Um, I loved him. It was like a great, great, great interview. But we got another dope ass interview for you right now. But you already know before we get there, I got to shout out some sponsors. You know, AD from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Well, yeah, she sponsors the show. She has a brand called Dig the Kicks. This is her shirt right here. Uh, dig the kits. This is the dad hat right here. Dig the kits. So make sure you go to that website and go. She got hoodies, joggers, sweatsuits, t shirts, shorts. She got it all. It's super lit. It's dig the kicks, dtk.com. And when you're at that promo, uh, when you're at that checkout screen, make sure you hit that promo code and type in royal so you can get 15% off. It's super lit. So make sure you're there. We are also sponsored by SwagNationMagazine.com, which is the number one independent artist magazine in the nation. And it's also reaching over 75 countries worldwide. It is a super, super lit thing. So make sure y'all work, make y'all way to that website, uh, SwagNationMagazine.com. And when you're there, you can check out some videos from the Royal Couch because we are up there under the key and king tab. So make sure y'all go to SwagNationMagazine.com. Oh, so now we're here. I'm super excited to have, um, y'all know him as Lester, y'all know him as Nunu. He's the award-winning director. He has the come up, the commute. He has a couple of other things that is super lit. He is super lit. I'm super excited to have him. I've actually been waiting for him for a really long time because I'm so inspired and just like love what he's doing. I've been meaning to get into his head because he has some amazing projects out here for us and he has won some awards for them. So that's to tell you how great he is. So without further ado, I want to bring on Mr. Lester no, no, what's good? No, no, what's good? No, no. What's going on? Hey. How are you? how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you again for coming on here. Thank you. I really appreciate you. And again, um, I can't stress how much um, inspiring and motivating you are. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you. Thank, and thank you. you. Appreciate that. Really thank so, you. For real, for real. Nice. So um, before we get started, um, let everyone know where they can find you at your social media. Okay. Uh, social media is your boy Nunu. It's Y-O-B-O-I-N-E-W-N-U-E. 
Uh, on YouTube, it's the same thing. Y O B O I N E W N U E. Uh, all my projects and everything is available at uh, YBNEntertainment.com. I know that's right. All his projects. He got a few. He got a few. So look, before we get into your projects and into uh, the circle and all of that, um, I want to go uh, back and let me know, before you got into this whole directing, like was directing was something that you always wanted to do? Like was this always your passion? Like let us, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, I, I remember first seeing a camera like in 1996. And I was like freaking eight years old. And I actually have the footage of me actually walking towards the camera, looking at it at a young age. And I always was fascinated at what was it about. And I just learned so much from it. And through like from, from high school, I remember after high school, I used to go to Renner Center. You ever heard of, you know, Renner yeah. Center, right? Yeah, I know Renner Center. And you can rent those big ass cameras. You got to put the cassette things in it. Uh -huh, and I used to rent those for every two days and go back and forth and do it right after high school to keep filming. And then I got all these, I got a lot of tapes, box full of tapes of me just filming everything I did. And I always, um, I always, I did um, probably like 15 auditions for the real world from ages from 16 to 25 to the max limit. And I, I came so close one time, which inspired me to like, okay, they, they're really probably already know what they're looking for when right. people do the casting. So I think it's better for me to at least uh, share my story. And that's when YouTube first started. Okay. So I, I got inspired by B-Hawk. Uh, not Brussie B-Hawk. Uh, B-Scott. Um, African Boy, The Scorpion Show, like the early ages of YouTube. And okay. I decided just to, just to film more with that and just create my YouTube channel and then build it, build it. And I've been blogging all these years and I was like, okay, I've done this light skin versus dark skin. You know, the typical blogging videos that you yeah, talk about. Yeah. I was like, there's nothing else for me to talk about. I've been talking about for a long time. I feel as though that I'm a visual type of person. I'm a Virgo. So I was like, let me just write. Let me just really find another way of try to express myself. So that's what I've done. I've just been creating short films and um, docu-series and stuff like that and just really focused on, like, the production and quality and stuff like that. That's that's super dope. So it it's in your blood, obviously, you know, for so young, you know, just doing this, something that's naturally good at. So going into doing, your, like, your short films and your recording and stuff like that, what, you know, I guess, can we it'd be safe to say that it was like, okay, I wasn't allowed to be on this platform, so I'm just going to create my own platform? Um, No, because I think YouTube at an early, at an early stages, is, it, it inspired me because no one was doing what I was doing on, on YouTube. I was basically just bringing my camera, bringing around party events and stuff like that. So that's kind of like me just being myself and really showing what it's about. I think YouTube, the the... The early stages of YouTube really inspired it rather than me wanting to do something right, different. Right, right. So, look, you, you're an empire to vlogging is what you are. Like, you, 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 you're one of the first vloggers yeah, out here. Let me like find you. out. We yeah. got a lot of icon here. Facts. So, yeah. going on to you. So, is this the same YouTube that you use currently? Is the one that you started all the way back then? Yeah, the same exact channel, 2008. Um, a lot of videos. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about God. God is good. I have to start all over because a hater hacked all my videos and deleted everything. And I'm kind of like, okay, I got to start fresh. I got to start new. And I kind of like kept going. I'm glad I did. It, it kind of like hindered me a little bit, kind of like discouraged me, but I kept going from that. That's dope. That, that's yeah. super dope. So going into the idea of the circle, when did that come about? And why was that a, a, a need? in you know in our industry um i first started doing the circle um i think it was 2012 or not 2012 earlier than that way i can't remember 2009 some of them one of those early days and um and i was i met a, a videographer and we talked about it and i wanted to show the relationship with my father 
So I went to Oklahoma, right, right? It's called the Circle Texas. It's on my YouTube channel if, we, if anybody want to watch it. And I basically just filmed my whole weekend in Dallas. And then I met my father. I, I, I introduced everyone to my father and how he really did not really agree with my lifestyle and like that. And he expressed it on the show, which I was glad that he did because I wanted to show everyone how... Um, how black fathers are not able to be fathers and right. they're they're really blind to from from what they think is a sin and they're they're them being ashamed and I really wanted to showcase that. And then it's kinda involved into me moving to New York and I tried to, before I moved to New York, I live in LA and I tried to do the circle LA before I moved to New York. Okay. And it's so funny, I never even said this before. Christopher Milan, Brandon Anthony, and a lot of local people that live in LA was on board to do the Circle LA. Oh, wow. But it kind of like fall down a little bit because it was a lot of stuff behind the scenes going on. So I, when I moved to New York, I was like, I'm going to do it. New York people are more driven. People move to New York to be productive and right, I right. just fell in love with the exposure it. and to, to, to expect exactly. that stuff, right? I, That's the difference between LA and New York. LA people move, people who move to LA, they move to LA to try to be discovered. But when people move to New York, they, people will, will, if they believe in your work and they believe in your vision, they're willing to give their time and dedication towards, that's the big difference between LA and New York to me, so. That's super lit. So with, with, with the Circle um, New York, you know, you have some, should I say, very outgoing cast members throughout the season. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what has been the process of you picking your, your cast? You know, not to reveal your secret, but, you know, what has been some of your process of, you know, who gets on your show? Um, I don't do open castings. Okay. I do soft castings and internal castings. And it's for the people that don't know what that means, what does that mean? Okay, so soft casting is just asking around. Softly try to figure out what's in people's head, what is what is their plans, what are they doing, what are they actively doing something. I'm not going to cast anyone who are not actively <laughs> performing or really showcasing their art um, or... I want people who are active in doing things they really want to pursue, really want to be showcased. Um, and then internal casting is basically, it's like soft casting, but it's internally. I DM people. I DM people all over the internet, and I get a lot of no's. I get a lot of yes, but I keep it moving. So, yeah. That's dope. So, I, I mean, I know because The Circle has been such a hit, I know you have a lot of requests you know what I mean? And people wanting to get on the show. It, it, does that help your narrow down a little bit where that people are kind of coming to you now instead of you just always having to go out? No, because I already have my, my mindset of, of who I want. So sometimes when new people come around and say they want to be a part of something, I kind of like think, then, baby, we filmed already. I don't know what you want, <laughs> what you want to be a part of. Like, we're done. It's like a lot of my stuff people want to be a part of because it's successful and they see that it's, it's, it's doing stuff, but there's a lot of hard work that we put into it to put it to this and saw people just talk anyway. And I don't know, but I am, I'm, I am, I am open to new people and stuff like that. I am doing other stuff for the remainder of the year and, well, I'm sure we get into that later, but I got a lot of stuff planned with, with new characters and cast members and stuff. Okay, cool. So I, I want to kind of put something, you know, we don't always have, you know, a director on and stuff like that. We normally just have the cast. So I would like for you to set the record straight with the way, you know, and again, we're not spilling, you know, secrets or yeah, not, but the way... You know, a lot of cast members will come on this, on this show and be like, oh, well, editing made me look like this, or I did, you know, whatever. Can we kind of lay that to rest and, you know, let the viewers know how far does editing go when it comes to creating storylines and, you know, creating drama and all of those things? So, I edit the show. Okay. And... What I do, I cut it down to what makes sense and what makes sense and was a part of the storyline. 
um, a part. Of, so I don't switch people words. I never do. I don't think any production should. I don't switch people words. I let people speak their mind and say what they want to say. And then if they on camera do not um, express themselves after filming the season, they come in and shoot the confessionals. So they have a second time around to at least uh, explain themselves and really take up from themselves and, and showcase whatever they want to showcase. So they are 100% responsible of what they say. Um, I take a lot of ums. Like when you watch my show, I think the most professional way of, of, of showcasing your work is letting people know what they're saying and what they're talking about. So I, I, I make sure, you know, I, I'm, but editing, it, for, for me, I don't know, I can't, I can't speak for other productions, but for my editing, everything is 100% accurate and real. So I don't, I don't sugarcoat nothing because people who I work with, I want everyone to succeed. I'm not here to backstab anyone or talk back about anyone I work with. I have a great relationship with 100% of everybody I work with since I was born. Oh, I know that's and right. I'll never leave a, a business or talented relationship with anyone for something I've done because it's not, that's not the case. I'm cool with everybody. That's, that's dope. That, that, that's actually something that I, you know, tell my team where it's like, you know, never burn bridges because you'll be surprised when you have to cross that bridge again. Right. So I want everyone to succeed because if I win, they win. And if they win, I win. It's not the fact that I'm trying to create drama because the Circle NYC it's not about drama. It's about real life stories, real life experiences, real life dreams and goals. Yeah, you can have a little drama here and there, but that can come with it. But in this situation from the circle, people brought in their own dramas. I was there just to capture it. I know that's right. And, and, and one thing I can say about the circle, um, and I do a lot of recaps for a lot of different shows. Um, one One thing I can say about the circle is that it's, I try to have an unbiased, you know, an unbiased show. Uh -huh. I feel like your show is very unbiased when it comes to the editing and stuff. Like, there's no, like, I'm going to make you the bad guy or make you the good guy. It's like, whatever happens is what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, the good guy sometimes has the fall. The, the bad guy sometimes has the up. You know what I mean? And that's what I love about your show because there's a lot of shows that – you know, kind of create the characters and make sure that they stick to it. So is there anything, is, is, do you, like, think about stuff like that when you are editing, or are you trying to actually create villains or whatnot? My goal is to humanize, humanize the cast. Like, I'm not doing this for, for it to be on internet and on web series. I don't even make money on the show. I don't monetize any of my episodes. So this basically is just an opportunity and a platform for everyone to showcase their art and whatever they want to showcase. And and I work, this season, I really want to focus on humanizing people, putting people in situations. I blindsided the whole cast. I put people in situations and I let them act upon it. And it's really up to them to really show your true colors or really show another side of you. A lot, of, a lot of the cast members change and, and grow from the previous seasons. And I'm glad with that, but I was able to at least humanize people like, like Melly B. I put him with his mother. I have, I have him still promoting his music, um, you know, fashion shows. And that's for everyone. I don't want to just film nothing and for us to argue about someone cheating on the other right. I, I just wanted to be something different and something real a real right. argument a real conversation that we go through every day for some everyone that can relate to right. that's dope I, I i think it's noticeable honestly i really really do think it's noticeable and i think the the the, the drama doesn't outweigh the positivity and the just the show itself you know what i mean it's not spew with nothing but drama so I think that's a, another great thing. So let's talk about another show. You know, we got... But, but yeah, I'll I, I keep going. What? I was going to say, yes, there's, there's drama on the show, but I think that everyone still need to understand just because there's less drama on the show, that doesn't mean that drama exists. And everyone individually, each cast member, have real lives 
they go home to to boyfriends and and real life situations. So the show really do affect their personal lives as well. And I think that everyone should realize and understand that as well. Right. Hey, that, and, and I don't think people realize because I think people just see them as what they see on TV and they always stay in that mind frame of that character. So I yeah, think it, it's, it is hurtful. Like when people read bad comments about themselves and that's even though they probably don't care, but it's kind of like, it's, it's still offensive. But sure. at the same time, these cast members are strong. I, I deal with some strong, dedicated motherfuckers, and I'm so blessed to be uh, working with them. I'm so honored, actually. You know, everything kind of like fell on my lap. It worked out, and I'm glad. I'm glad we we got this. Yeah, I think I think you pick an awesome cast. I think you always do pick an awesome cast. So shout out to you for that. So let's talk about other things, you know, like the commute and there's other things that, you know, we got going on. Let's, let's talk about that show a little bit. You know, what was your- I thought she was going to talk about more drama on the circle, but we can keep going. Oh, no. You, I mean, I, 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 I mean, you as a director, I mean, I, I, you can't tell me too much. Yeah. But I could, m m let me just say real quick before we move on, like the, what, what people can expect for the rest of the season. Then, go ahead. oh, we were gonna definitely get back to that. Okay. Oh, so go ahead, go. Ahead. But you can, you can, you can let them know what, what's, what, what, what's going on. Okay, so we're we're currently on episode eleven. It's three episodes left. We filmed from March through October, I think, and including within that time, so. It originally we were supposed to do 16 episodes. So in the middle, I decided, you know what? Let me just cut it down to 14 because it's going to be too long. I'm going to be over it. <laughs> so I cut it down. Now the episode is a little longer so people can enjoy it a little more and have a little more content. Um, but for the remaining of the season, you guys are is going to see uh, a little more togetherness with the circle. Uh, they're going to a park. And it's just going to really show like how it started from Bugs and Earth Tone just meeting each other. That was actually their first time ever getting to know each other. They didn't know nothing how they progress and really show how, like, the true meaning of the circle, which was brotherhood. Right. And, and I'm glad everyone is going to see just the camaraderie and just the togetherness with the circle. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of Earth Tone is putting together a tribute concert to his mother. Which is I'm really happy about because um, we talked about this and I really wanted to help try to give Ertone a justice storyline and he brought that up on episode one and I was like let's do it and it was very I love Ertone's storyline I think he's a yeah is a visual that concert was very emotional mm -hmm. to me because I was a part of something that really was important to him and his family. And that really, really means a lot to me. And you see, it's a lot of stuff going on. So you guys should definitely stay tuned for the rest of the. Well, no, cause now, now I'm intrigued now because you know I, I was trying to be a good, I was trying to be a good guy and and not get into the drama, and ask you these questions that I, you know, that we would. But I, I, now I'm intrigued into into things. So as far as as far as Melly B and is concerned with you know the whole drama of the bugs and him and stuff like that. Are we going to see a little bit more? Are we going to see that play out a little bit better? Are we going to see some resolution? Um, you're going to see multiple of attempts. Multiple. Um, so there's three episodes left. So you're going to see multiples of attempts. Even I came, I make a cameo. Oh, dude. Uh, I, I come on two times. I make a cameo. Found back, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I I come in to try to see. I step in because you know when I step in, it means something serious. So um, I felt like I was the only person. David tried it last episode. Oh, uh, Coco Giselle tried it. So I was the last attempt, and you guys going to see uh, the conclusion to that and what happened afterwards. Um, it's very entertaining. Yeah, and um. You see, it's uh, I I try not to get involved with it. I try to see how everything played out, but it will be a very eye opener um season finale. And you know what? It, it, it's funny because you said you touched on something a little bit a while ago. You talk about you know you have a good relationship with everyone you work with. 
Now, can we reverse that? And and would, could they say the same for you? As far as the cast is concerned, you know, do you get any, you know, backlash or anybody, you know, upset because what they seen on the episode and they feel like editing is wrong or they, you know, and not to bring him up, but we had uh, um, on somebody, you know, on another show, uh, a cast member talk about, you know, they quit the show because they didn't like how they was revealed on the show. You know what I mean? Have you had any of that? I had a couple of people come up to me and they was concerned about them not being visible on there. And then I think, I think a lot of people need, well, a lot of cast members, what they do, they film for five months. And they come back and just for, they're very forgetful, <laughs> very forgetful, Mariah. Very forgetful. I was like, remember when we were filming the photo show? Remember when we did that? I think that you need to wait a little bit, wait till it come out, and then say thank you. But a lot of people really, really uh, cast members, and and, I, and it's okay because when we do the confessionals, I have to remind them of what happened and have let them watch the clips because a lot of people can't remember. So when people is complaining it's probably it's i don't care i'm very nonchalant a lot about a lot of stuff it, you gotta really be have tough skin to really deal with all these personalities right and i'm kind of like this are we gonna like it's fine i will just show you i i, I kind of like I'm a, I'm a person i will i will prove you wrong and let you know how it was supposed to get done but i never no, I never had had a cast member that told me that hey, they're wrong, that they're that they'll quit, they they will quit the show because of this and that. No, I never had a cast member that done that. So, so good that. let's talk reunion a little bit. Has that happened yet? We're filming a reunion um in two weeks, and um we haven't we we're building the set. Um, we have a surprise celebrity uh, host. I can't say the name yet. Um, but that host, I, I can't say he or she could probably get away. But it's, it's, it definitely is a celebrity, and that person will be here that weekend. And we are filming on um, from one to six thirty, so it's gonna be fun. I invited the whole cast, and it's gonna be very interesting. We're um, setting up production. Um, this is my first reunion of all seasons I had for the circle, so I feel like I need to raise yeah. that bar. For First production and stuff like that and and really try to make it work because I think I'm gonna invite everyone even from previous seasons so I really wanted to at least showcase everybody and make this right like I was supposed to be done that's dope I, I, I honestly very look forward to that I honestly would love to be a part of that process and, and kind of um, be there as well yeah. <laughs> I'll DM not... you the dates and if you're available I'll Come on. Oh, yeah, good. definitely. I would love to be, you know, go behind the scenes, do some little interviews and some people, you know what I mean? That could be. Yeah, a, we got Red Carver, we and Kater, we got sponsors. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah, I, like, gonna, I like to be a party. party. We're going to celebrate. Um, It's not going to, it's going to be, a, we're going to talk about issues and drama, but the majority of the season was in drama. We, right. we focus on real lives and our artistry and music and visibility and out in hip hop and and I'm um, transitioning. We even got, you know, Michelle, she went through the transition on the show. And, and Ayoki, how she's battling um, identity and trying to figure out which, finding herself and and interracial relationships. And, and we have so much going on on the show that I really don't want the drama to oversight everything. There's a lot going on, and we're going to discuss everything at the reunion. Cool, cool. That's so dope. I actually really, really look forward to that reunion. That's going to be... It's gonna can I little... smoke on here? Yeah, you can do. As oh, okay, you do. I'm just gonna smoke a little blunt real quick. Oh yeah, no, you no, can you keep you... talking. Go ahead. No, you you fine. You do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> can I smoke on here? No, you can. Look, so um, <laughs> let let let's kind of go on to the commute a little bit, and I, I want to talk about that and and have you explain um what that's about a little bit, and to the viewers that don't haven't seen it yet, can you give us a little synopsis and you know, what was your mindset in creating that? Okay, The Commute is my first short film um, that I did about three years ago. Um, the Commute, I got inspired uh, in a subway. 
and I was just looking at everybody's lives and personalities, and I realized that everyone has a journey. Everyone is headed to a destination. Everyone is going through situations in life. Like someone could be quiet in the subway, and they'd probably be going through the worst time ever in life. So I thought about writing a story where a guy travels through the subway, and he enter he cross paths with these people, and it starts their story, and it starts what they're going through. And I wanted to relate to everyone because personally, uh, my family really don't support me because of the content I have, which is crazy. Um, because it's too gay. I don't have support from my father and a lot of people in my family because of that, because they're blind because of religion and other bullshit mm -hmm. that I'm too grown to even worry about. So uh, I wanted, at that time in my life, I wanted to create a diverse group of people, straight, gay, everybody. And, and I wanted my first film to show that I'm not going to focus on the gay narrative and stuff like that because when you're doing that, you're really just discounting a lot of people who are really want to learn what you want to learn. So if you put a poster of two guys kissing, straight people ain't going to click on that. Right. What they're going to do, they're going to click on something they're going to relate to. And if you have something that you want to put in there, they probably can learn something from that story if it's parallel and if and if and if it makes right. sense. That's dope. I, I, I think um that's a way of thinking that most people don't think of, I think. And mm -hmm. it's just trying to force somebody to look at the two for you know what I mean? It's like, well why don't you like these two men kissing them blah blah, right. blah 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 and trying to make it and stuff like that. So I can kinda like how you Right, you like, gotta turn around and get that bridge. And try to teach it to them of why they should. On, on why they should learn about it and you know so I'm glad I did that and I have you know other stuff afterwards so it's on YouTube anybody want to um, it's all on my YouTube channel you can check out the short films and everything everything um, about the commute yeah I know that's right so is there anything that you got coming up that, that, that we should know about anything new coming up mm -hmm. A lot. I've been filming. Well, we've been filming a lot, but uh, Keeping Love the Secret, which is another short film that I released yet last year, it just hit a million views on YouTube, which is I'm happy about because when I uploaded it, I thought, oh, like, it's going to get 20,000 views or 30,000 views. But when it going up to like 700,000, I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> Who is watching this? So that's kind of inspired me. You know what? I found my niche. Let me just stick to more scripted stuff. So I'm planning to do uh, Keeping Love a Secret 2 next week. We have a table read in the middle of this week. So we got the cast. We had auditions um, two weeks ago. So I'm excited about that. A lot more scripted stuff that I'm about to do in in the circle stuff as well. I know. That's right. Tyler Perry better move over. I know, right? I'll move over. <laughs> yeah, move over. Look, shit, we got some new talent in tour. No, you That's know, I'm just my. So, like, I don't even want to be Tyler Perry. I just want to be myself. I just, I just want to really show people just like, this is me, Lester Matthews. I'm here. I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. Uh, I've been here for a minute. But I just really wanted to just show people because I have a unique, unique story that I want to tell for myself. Like, Tyler Perry have like, stories he probably don't even want to tell. Right, right. But in stories that he telling, but uh, through other people, and that's, that's, that's a great way to do that. But I have a different narrative. I love Tyler Perry, and yeah, I know that's right. Look, you better look. I I, I just Let love me, right now. I'm telling him. No, I'm joking. <laughs> look, look I, I just love I love men that know where they're going. You know, it's very inspiring. That's why I started off by saying you're very inspiring, and motivating because the things that you do. I, you put your best foot forward, and it shows in the quality of what you're putting out. And there's a lot of people that are inspired by that because it's, it's people don't realize it's hard to follow your dreams it's hard to 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 take that sacrifice to make sure that your dreams are going to where it's going you know what i'm saying to you know to post that one video to see if you even can get five likes let alone a million you know views right. or whatever the case may be so 
you know, with that type of inspiration and stuff, where where does that come from, and where do you stem that uh, inspiration from? It's a mix of everything. It's the mix of drive. It's the mix of rebellion. It's the mix of just everything. Putting my heart into it. Um, it's about passion as well. I don't know where it come from because I could edit for people. People around me and close to me don't understand. How did I do that? How I edit this and how I edit that? It takes time. It's very time consuming. And I don't know. It's And I think it's also about the ending product. I think every time when even creators create something and they see something that they have produced and created, they kind of like shock. Well, for me, I'm, sometimes I'm shocked. And I'm, I'm a fan as well of my own work. And I watch my shows back myself. And I'm like, wow, did I do that? Right, that's dope. So it's just about the fact that the ending product, knowing that this is the end goal and knowing that you have a goal and a, like, knowing that you have something that you have to have accomplished. Because sometimes, to me, I always tell myself, if I don't do it, it's not going to get done. And I think that everybody should live by that. Like, if you don't do it, if I didn't do the circle, it would never You're happen. You're talking about the circle, right? You're right. Right. So I think that people under, have to understand that just because you have all these ideas, just because you're a writer, just because you script and stuff like that, your work is not done because you still got to get up. You still got to cash. You still got to film. You still got to do this. You still got to do posts. You still got to promote it. You still got to promote your shit, and you still got to receive your award. Hello? Talk about it. Let, let, I was definitely going to bring that up. Let's talk about that a little bit. <laughs> Let's talk about that a little bit. You saw I had to pin it. Award-winning. <laughs> Award-winning director. Th that's super dope. You know, yes. it, 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 I always tell, I always tell, like, you know, my team and even my staff and my nine-to-five, like, you know, it, it, I give, like, good jobs. And stuff. I know nobody needs a good job. I know nobody needs a gold star, but it feels damn good to be recognized for your hard work and stuff. So what mm -hmm. what is that feeling for you to know that somebody recognized, well, a whole lot of people recognized your hard work and gave you this award? It didn't hit me till this morning, because last night, because I went to awards yesterday, I was, I was nominated for this. It, it wasn't even, like, best show and best like this. It's, it was a prestigious award the highest award you can receive from this award show about social impact and how you can make a social impact and how basically how you're making a difference, basically. Um, so when I got it, I was like, okay, I'm going to bring my speech on stage. And then I got announced that I won. I went on stage and in front of everyone. I was looking at my notes. I was like, what the hell? I can't find I was like, let me just speak from my heart. Oh, well, for all these people. So I spoke my mind. I talked about my journey getting here and stuff like that and and then I looked in the crowd and I was like this is an opportunity for you to really say something and then I was like well I told my story about you know growing up in New Orleans being a gay black man and and stuff like that and at the end of it I, de I decided to dedicate this award to my beautiful trans sisters because I feel as though that they are you know, not visible enough. They're, you know, not seen and they're misheard and, and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I just wanted to uh, at least have a message. It's not all about winning. It's, it's about opportunities and it's about having that right moment and saying something that really, you really someone need to hear. Right. I could go on stage, oh my God, I want to dick my cast. I want to think. No. It's not about that. It's, it's, it's about having every opportunity you can get. I was on the Wendy Williams show. I lied to get on there about ex Wendy, but I wanted that moment. It's not about a moment of, for me, when I did that, it's not about a moment of what I'm going to do at that moment if I could. Mm. So when I when I got the award, I know I can. And now going forward, I'm going to just use any opportunity to speak the truth. Let these hoes know what's going on and just be visible about my community because that's who I rep. Mm. So it's kind of like if I win, they win. If they win, I win. It's no competition. 
is that's how it's supposed to be. It is. It sure is. You're not supposed to be against each other. So this award was dedicated to everybody. And but for me, and generally, those are straight people. This is not a gay award show. Those are straight people who voted on this. So that really hit me this morning, knowing that these people look past right stereotypes, look past that, and they got something from the circle. And that's what I wanted. I wanted straight people to look at the circle and learn something from it, knowing that there's not always a Derek J with high heels on TV. There are just so many different personalities in the right. LGBT community. There's masculine gay men. There's feminine gay men. There's trans. There's a German beauty. Uh, you know, there's a, a who is a trans woman with a lesbian experience. I wanted to showcase that, and I I felt accomplished. That's and I'm I'm happy with that, and I cried this morning mm -hmm. like a baby. <laughs> that, that that that's so dope because you know what we as viewers, and you know you don't. That's why I love my show that I get to talk to people because my show is not about the ratchet and the downing our community. It's about empowering <laughs> what we do. And it's amazing that you can take the entertainment aside, you're still bringing an amazing message on what you, you know, you would think, oh, he's just doing it for, so he can get his views, so he can get his coin up, and he just wants to be I don't even be money in the show. I'm broke as hell. <laughs> you, but what I'm saying, but from show. outside looking in, that's what people are going to assume. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It, it, it is for the, the the luxury of life and and all of this stuff. But you actually have a deeper meaning for what you do. You actually have, and that's why you are, in my eyes, successful, very much successful, and you know, going to continue to strive because right. you have that dedication, you have that real life passion, and it's for the community. So going in, talking about the community, and not to say anything negative, but I want to get a little bit more personal with you. And um, what is going on with you in your personal life? Is there a love life? What's going on with that? Hmm. Niggas ain't shit. Look, talk on it. Niggas ain't shit. I'm focused. Uh, I've been through, I, I dated this guy last year. He reminded me that I need to just focus on myself because mm. these niggas ain't shit. Like sometimes when you're very vulnerable and at times and you put your all into someone throughout your, old, throughout your whole 20s, I'm 33, and it's kind of like I'm repeating the same pattern. And I think that it's kind of like, okay, I'm just going to have to just focus on myself. Because if I don't focus on myself and do what I need to do, niggas could come and, and then I would find the right person for me. And then actually at times, sometimes uh, it's kind of like if, if you don't really love yourself, just like Ruben, how can you love someone else? How can you put your love and 100% and dedication into someone else? That would be selfish to know that you're really not ready for a relationship and you really got something that you really want to work with in yourself and so many goals and dreams. And they'll be selfish to do that. But at the same time, if you do find that person and then they really show that they support you and it's mutual and and I would love to find someone and build my empire with. I would love to fall in love with someone and say, hey, babe, you filmed that, I'll edit that, you did this. It's, it's not like that here because people, I don't know. I haven't. Well, but. I think you said something key that uh, you'll focus on you. And I think that then when, when you do that, I think just in general, let alone relationships, but I just think life starts to fall into place. When you mm -hmm. start focusing on you and narrowing down the things that you want and the things that you're, you know, that really make you happy. Mm -hmm. then the things start to come because you start to be in an environment. The energy that you throw off now is an energy of, you know, of love and, 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 and like you said, being ready. You know what I mean? So then you do meet that person that's meant to be for you. Then right, you right, do right. get into that right job or right career or whatever the case may be. Then that money does start to hit or because now you're in the set, you know, my space. So I think you're on the right track for all of that. Right. You know, I think that for us as gay men, we rush things a lot and we do. don't really take the time to really get to know that person and we just have sex a lot. 
and we just really just fuck someone on the first day and and next day you know it, you're gonna see them next week at the club and you hugging them like you know them forever. So it's kinda like some things need to change and and that's not for everybody, but some some things need to change through people on getting to know people better. And that's even start with you getting to know yourself. Because if you get to know yourself, you can learn how to tolerate other things from other people. Because sometimes relationship is about toleration, is about communication, yeah. and it's about uh, compromise. I tell people, I tell so people all the time, compromise. If you is got not, an attitude problem, uh -huh. and you already know this nigga ain't going to, he got an attitude problem again, it's not going to work because you have to know how you can learn how to calm all their nerves down and listen facts so that's how it's supposed to be so if you really don't know how yourself how you can control yourself and your temper and how you treat shit it's not about you compromising and changing yourself it's about you understanding other people and trying to mold yourself and become a partnership mm -hmm. and i think that's that's, that's that's true that's what people really don't know is about self-love it's all about self love, and I and like like we just spoke. I think self love will kind of put everything, all of life, in perspective for you if you start focusing, owning in on right. what's inner, and then you know instead of worrying about what's outside. So that's a lot of knowledge that you have, and a lot of wisdom, I, which is dope. What what is something that you would tell yourself back in the day that you know now that maybe you would have been discouraged for back then? Which year? Because I got every year, baby. Well, 21, at, 20. before, you know, just getting into, getting into, you know, maybe take us back to 2008, about to do your, you know, your first YouTube and you recording, mm -hmm. you know, those nerves that you're like, oh my God, is it going to make it? Is this whatever case be? What would you tell yourself then? I, I just tell myself to, uh, don't trust everyone around your your vision um i remember that was a time i can't even say his name it was i interviewed karama brown that was my first interview when i did i interview a lot of celebrities a lot of people i interview a lot of celebrities tammy roman um candy sheree i interview a lot of people in my early age of doing youtube i when i interviewed karama brown one year I met his manager at that time, and I don't think that manager's now. And he wanted to manage me. And it was early, like, 2009, and I was like, Ramo, ooh, he could get it. <laughs> and then um, it, I met his manager, and he was telling me that I needed to delete some videos because it's too gay, and he don't know how to promote me and stuff like that. So I might have deleted, like, 10 videos about me talking about being gay and da, da, da. And I was like, why... And why I'm listening to this motherfucker who just gave me advice and he can't even get Kar Karamo's career together. He's been on the real road, not from YouTube. Right. So, but me and Karamo are friends now later on, but I'm just saying that that situation, just me learning, listening to people and not really trying to be your, be myself, that, that was really a, a distraction and a hindrance for me really just opening it up on a lot of things. And it took me a long time to really be comfortable and open up on a lot of things from that, from that point. That, 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 Not Karamo, his, his manager. Me and Karamo is cool. Now we know each other. Look, you better, yeah, we know Shout each other. Shout out to y'all in the comments. I see y'all. What's up? How you doing? Thank you. Thank you for the nice comments. I see it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No, definitely. I mean, you deserve all, all the nice things that's being said. I think, you know, like I, I keep saying, you know, you're doing big things. I, I like this power to you. Do you, do you, do you plan on taking, like, you know, do you plan on going, you know, to networks with your stuff? Uh, do you plan on, you know, do you want to keep it on the internet? Like, what, what is your goal with that? Season two of The Circle, I had, I had, I had a pitch meeting with BET and Viacom. I don't let no one ever know that. Um, I had a meeting I with them. these exclusives. Yes. I was actually just going to go to, on the next stages to get it picked up with BET. And, but they picked up another show. I'm not going to say the name of it. But they picked up another show at that time, which was cool. So I just kept on, and I was like, okay. Because I don't think really people really, people really 
realized that I don't really, I don't post my shows on YouTube to compete with other web shows because when I film The Circle, I attended it for BET to pick it up. I focus on every little thing. I'm not going to focus on... I didn't want to release it on YouTube, basically. I wanted YouTube... I wanted BET to pick it up. Right. So when B, when they didn't go through with BET, I'm left with all this footage. And I was like, okay, let me just put it on YouTube and just try again on another, on another season. So I tried to get for season three and moving forward because I'm not going to give up. So I guess that's a little... Little thing, yeah. I had a meeting with Viacom. I got something else in the works, but I can't say the network name. Um, but it's getting there, and we're moving in the right direction, and I'm happy for it. I know that's right. It, it's gonna happen. Trust the process. Mm -hmm. Trust the process. The timing. You know, you it it be it wasn't your time, and that wasn't your station. It was supposed to be on. You and know? you know, you know, it's so funny. Even if it don't even work out in the next five years, I'm still gonna do what I gotta do. I'm still gonna be in y'all whole spaces. I'm that's still gonna right. make it work because I'm not going anywhere. It's still gonna work, and even if I, you know, it, it it doesn't matter to me because it's not about numbers. It's not about this because if I if I wanted to be about numbers, I would monetize my videos. This is about something that I wanted to get picked up. This is about something that I wanted to show a real representation. I wanted to show. A different side of quality and what it can be I just wanted to do something different and I believe in um, quality over quantity because I wanted something that's timeless and for something to people to binge watch right. later on be entertaining and, and to really show that hey you know what and also my cast member something they could look back and say that it was a part of as well Right. No, it's an amazing show, honestly. Uh, the Circle is like something that I, I watch um, all seasons and even before I was doing the Royal Couch and stuff like that. So like that's something that like I really, really enjoy. I think the quality is amazing. And I think it's, you know, I, I don't like to compare and contrast, but, you know, there's, there's not many competing at your level. You know, so, you know, and it's not to bash nobody down or anything, but it's just to big you up and let you know that, you know, you're doing amazing things out here and you're, you know, you're creating, you know, a platform. And I wouldn't be surprised if you was to be your own network instead of waiting for another network to come. You know what I mean? Because why not? You have the content. I was about to say something, but you'll see. I know that's right. Look, I, look, I claim it. I know that's right. <laughs> so, but honestly, I compete with my previous seasons. Like, I look at the previous season and figure out what I need to do better. So that's the only comparison I do. And there's nothing wrong with those other shows. Um, what is it? The, the Come Up with the Come Up New York, G List. I support everybody. Um, they're doing something, and like. It's better to do, to do something than nothing at all. They are, they went out there, they're telling a story. It could be a shady mess or it could be in, in their studio, but they are doing what I'm doing. And I cannot look at another show and say I'm better than them because I know the hard work and dedication for them to do I'm that, cool. especially, you know, and, and I put my hats out to any curator out there who's really trying to put something out there. It's kind of like, I'll, I'll be hating at this point if to say, hey, because they're doing something right for, to get people's attention. Oh, no, so, I love the come up. The come up is yeah, just, I'm saying one general, of my favorites. Like, big ups to them. And I don't want those creators and to really read into the comments of these subscribers and viewers because they are not my voices. They don't think for me or say anything for me. So if the creators of other shows are watching, I'm proud of y'all. Keep up what you're doing. Keep it up. That's dope. Yeah, there's room for everybody. I always say there's room for all of that stage is big enough for all of us to stand on. And yeah, yeah. Up. Taking there's over. enough money. They print the, They print that shit every day. Trust me, it's enough. You feel mm. me? Like, we out here, we winning, and I just think that we need to all, you know, something I said in the last interview, um, 
we all just need to come together. And if we was to all come together, they'll be surprised of how powerful we really are. Well, I was about to spit them out. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had water in that cup. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I think there's room for individuality. Um, I, I've been contact from other cast members from other shows to be on Circle. But I just think that every show is different. Um, and it's kind of weird for, for, I don't know, for me, yes, you, yeah, there should be some unity, maybe something involved for like, hey, black reality docu-series awards, stuff like that, to bring us together. We can definitely support each other in that way. I, I definitely will support that. Yeah, that'd be dope. Maybe, yeah. like you said, if you don't do it, who is? All right. Like, yeah, that'd be something really dope. That's what's up. So what is your um what are your favorite moments of the season for so far on cast? I'm gonna interview you. Now you're interviewing me. Um honestly my favorite moments okay, so I'm from Jersey, right? So I live for things that are like I can kind of relate to and the people that are in my life and you know what I mean, things of that nature or whatever the case may be. So um, I used to throw parties and stuff like that. So Michelle Fontaine, um, I live for her personality, and she reminds me of somebody. So I, I loved her performance. I love when she performs. I love that you show the aspect of drag. Um, I love, um, to be honest with you, I really, really, really love the whole um, David Boone. I like him in his studios and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I just love him, period. I just think, like, his mouth is something so... I, and, and you know what's funny? Because I don't find him messy. I just find him, like, he really just spills what comes out of his mind. Like, he's just real, whatever the case may be. And um, my favorite, favorite moments is Bugs and his boyfriend. I think they are the most cutest thing in the world. I, I really believe their relationship. A lot of times when you watch TV, you're like, is this real or are they just together for whatever? I really love their moment because I really feel like it's real. You get the good, the good you get the bad. You, it's not really bad, but you get them in all aspects of the relationship. So that's really cool um, of what I see. Um, and I'm really interested, my my devil's advocate side is really interested in what Bugs and Melly's going to go through. And I really kind of want to... Uh, really see how that plays out because I really feel I honestly I'm 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 curious to see how it all plays out at this reunion to be honest with you because there's a lot of people that don't like Melly B. So I'm really curious yeah. to see how this is gonna play out with all of them because Michelle Fontaine has a problem with him. Bugs has a problem with him. You know there's a couple you know, like there's a lot of people that really but, don't so Bugs and wait, wait, wait. Bugs and Michelle at this point is the only people who have issues with right with Melly, right? What David, what David, him and Melody and David squashed whatever issues right. they had. Or whatever they had. Uh -huh. so you're, gonna, you're gonna see, so next episode, you're gonna see finally David ask a question to the cast to really show their cards and, and their true feelings. Because a lot of people, her tone and everybody else, they've been playing it safe and they're keeping their opinions to themselves. So you're gonna, next episode, you're gonna really see the true colors and not. Entertainment, two colors situation, but you 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 can see a little what little where everyone is at in the cast. Okay, so, so we kind of get like it's a, gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Um, it gonna be a lot of reads. Melly B, he, his conf oh lord, his confessional reads. And I I don't no shame. I, mean, I live for Melly. <laughs> like what you know. I, I watch it for, of course, for, you know, when I do my interviews, but I watch it as a fan. Like I said, I've been watching it before. The, and just as a fan, like, I, my favorites are always the quote-unquote villains. Like, you know, I always like the Kenya Moores and the Jocelyn Hernandez and the people that people love to hate and type of, you know what I mean? And right. And he's just that for me. He's just that person that everyone can't stand, but I kind of live for him, and I don't understand why they don't live for him. Like, I don't. Um, let me say this about Melody B. Melody B knows what he's doing. Look, 
the um Instagram is gonna cut us off in twenty seconds, so I'm gonna like redo it. Okay, and, okay. And bring you back up, and I'm just gonna group it together okay. so that we don't cut you off. I don't want to be. You gonna cut off now and come back? Yeah, I'm gonna cut off now.